Hello everyone, Mimikins here. Alatrian has finally arrived in the new world, so I thought I'd do a video showing off all the rewards available from beating him, as well as several builds for different weapons that help make the fight easier. I know a lot of people are struggling with this fight, but after you understand the mechanics and know what to do, it's more manageable. I've completed the quest in single player, two player and multiplayer with randoms. I've put my builds through the paces and know they work. You need to deal enough elemental damage to Latrium to survive his Eschaton's judgement. You know you have done this if he falls over during the fight and the handler will say you're doing a good job containing a Latrian's power. Then when the judgement happens you can place down a health booster and use one timed Astera Jerky to survive it. This is more than enough to deal with the incoming damage and the booster will be up every time for the judgement. Max potions would also work for this but I tend to prefer to save them for general use. If you haven't dealt enough elemental damage this method will not work and you will cart. First up we need to look at Alatrian's elemental active states. He has three forms, fire active, ice active and dragon active. He has different elemental weaknesses depending on what active state he's in. I made this chart to outline his elemental affinity within any given active state. It's far easier to deal enough elemental damage to avoid carting to his judgement if you use an element which has a 3 star weakness. He has a set pattern for elemental changes and what element he starts off depends on what quest you're trying to complete. If you're doing the special assignment or the evening star event quest, he's going to start off in the fire element and then go through the cycle. However, if you're doing the death star quest, he's going to start off in the ice element. I'm going to go over several builds that I found worked really well. First up, I have an elemental light bowgun, the Soul Fire Blaze. This bowgun feels like it was designed for the fight, as it contains both rapid fire ice and fire ammo, meaning I can switch freely depending on what state he's in to maximise damage. Fire active, use ice ammo. Ice active, use fire ammo. And when he's in dragon active, you can use whichever. Elemental light bowguns have the advantage of being able to attack almost constantly with high mobility. You don't have to worry about breaking his horn as you're prepared for either element. This is the build I used, make sure you bring materials to craft more ammo. I had enough ammo to last solo from start to finish with this. Bring materials to craft max potions, use a sterile jerky for healing the judgement damage. If you're playing solo, a fortified jewel can be useful in case you cart, however I didn't feel I needed it so I opted for free meal instead. Use whatever you prefer. The Safi set has plus 5 on every elemental defence except dragon, so eating for elemental large will reduce the elemental damage and give you immunity for those blights. I still put in a resist jewel so I wouldn't be affected by the dragon blight which nullifies elemental damage of any type, including the elemental shots from light bowgun. However, these slots could be used for something else if you bring nullberries. Again, this is down to personal preference. The Safi set bonus also has the benefit of adding extra elemental power and affinity while your weapon is drawn. I also have some multi-custom elemental weapon builds that I used for dual blades, but it could be adapted for any other melee weapon with little to no modifications needed. My sets here are designed to have their elemental properties linked to the charm and weapon, so it's easy to change between the elements. Kiara weapons with built-in critical element have an obvious advantage here, but you can still get away with many crafted options. For a high-risk build, reliant on dealing damage fast to knock a Latrian over, I found this build good. However, it doesn't leave much room for errors and should only be used if you're comfortable with the fight. Resentment is great for adding extra attack while using the Safi set, but for those who may be using the health region augment, depending on the weapon, you may prefer to slot something else in. The only issue I have with the Safi set and dual blades is missing attacks. Activating Blade Dance at a bad time, or if you like to use Demon Flurry as a form of movement, it can make you vulnerable since you're locked in animation and it just saps your health. If you don't pay attention, you can end up killing yourself. Next up is the build here which I found very resilient and forgiving on mistakes. For players, this build will offer more damage indirectly as you'll spend less time taking potions and items. This build offers amazing survivability and provides enough damage to meet the requirements for the fight. It's far easier to use the 3 star elemental weakness to meet the requirements than it is to use dragon. Although Aladrian's weapons may change this. 
The only issue is if you don't break the horn and it changes to the opposite element. You won't deal any elemental damage and since Capcom have disabled Farcasters for the fight, you can't change weapons without carting. In a group, people coming in with different elemental weapons is helpful in case no one manages to break the horn. So wise, if you choose a 3 star element weapon and you don't break the horn you're going to have to accept that a death is incoming and adding in a fortify jewel will lessen that pain, as well as give you the opportunity to stock up on supplies. A good way to break his horn is to use the clutch claw to perform a flint shot sending him flying into one of the pillars in the room. I made three versions of the melee builds covering ice, fire and dragon elements so I could quickly change up depending on the quest. I see people fainting to the normal moves trying to run with only DPS skills and failing the mission for everyone. This build gives you the confidence to play more aggressively knowing that you can recover quickly if you do mess up. If you really struggle with the fight you can use the Palico to gadget Plunderblade to gather Alatrian parts which may be useful if you want to gather a small amount for crafting some items. I've heard of players using this method to complete some armour and weapons without actually beating Alatrian. After completing the special assignment, you will be rewarded with this pendant. The armour and weapons you can craft are very nice. The weapons are incredible for a dragon element with huge purple sharpness bars for comfort builds, meaning you don't at all feel like you need to use skills like Master's Touch or Protective Polish. I've left timestamps in the description for when each weapon is showcased if you want to skip to your favourite one. The weapon I was most excited about was actually the light bow gun. It's the first time I've seen rapid fire dragon ammo on a gun, and rapid fire on all the elements is so nice. I can already think of a way I'm going to build this to offer up a playstyle which is incredibly fun. The armors are very interesting, it comes with two set bonuses. The first one you need to equip two pieces and it adds extra elemental power to your weapon in relation to your armor resistances. This means that defense is also adding DPS, which I love. The next set bonus comes after equipping three parts, which increases all elemental resistances by 20%, which in itself is nice, but this also feeds back into the DPS increase of the first set bonus. This is the alpha set. and the beta set. These are really good sets and they offer up a change in the way elemental builds can be made and perfectly complement the Elatrian weapons. I'm really excited to see what builds I can make with them. They also offer a powerful counter to Elatrian himself, except you need to defeat him first. Let's not forget about Dee. She has some new fashion to wear as well. While Dee isn't very keen on the look, She's holding out for that chibi pookie outfit coming in the next fest. She does think the stats will help her win some battles. Overall, I enjoyed the fight and think Capcom have done a good job bringing him to life in the new world. I know there are a lot of players out there who don't agree with the kill mechanics of Eschaton's judgement and I completely understand that sentiment. 
It's much easier when you know what to do and can plan accordingly. Once you've completed the assignment or are able to do the event quest instead, people actually know what to do and the success rate is higher. Also, the fact that you're not instantly thrown into his face upon launching the event quest helps you gather players with an SOS at your own pace before you decide to drop down to him. Just take care to note which quest you're doing so you don't start off on a weapon that doesn't deal elemental damage. It's a good idea to check players joining your quest to get an idea if it's going to be successful. If you see players with gear that isn't augmented wielding blast or raw weapons, it usually doesn't end well. Best of luck with this and let me know below what your experience has been so far with him and any unique methods you might have used to overcome this event. If you are still unsure about some things then ask in the comments below and perhaps a fellow hunter or myself can assist. Thanks for watching, please support the channel by liking and subscribing and I'll see you next time.